So we're going to ignore what's happening with price just for a minute. We're not going to get into any kind of profound financial discovery in this one. We're just going to look at some of the reasons to have gold and silver and how those reasons might affect how we pick it up. So I think it's just impossible to have a conversation about gold or silver performance without first having one about your use case. So why you're buying gold and silver, what you're planning to do with it. Now in my last video, I mentioned some of the wild silver hype. It just gets a little crazy out there. And if your reason for buying silver is to become ultra wealthy, well, it hasn't been performing up to that standard. Probably haven't made enough for that country estate or his or her Lamborghinis. But if you just want a few ounces of gold, maybe 100 ounces of silver, you want to set that aside to cover a short-term emergency, well, you're probably plenty happy with recent performance. Well, we're looking at gold pushing new all-time highs, so any gain in that context is going to make you feel pretty good about your purchases. But if your use case is having a little bit for an emergency, you probably just don't care. Why would you be concerned about a pullback if you don't plan to be using it in that time frame? Now, I'm not doing this to become ultra wealthy, but I definitely have multiple use cases for gold and then to a smaller extent, silver. So I'm going to cover some stacking strategies that have worked for me based on those different use cases, strategies that are really easy to overlook when we're in the middle of a price rally. Before we get into it though, if you're looking for gold or silver, check out SD Bullion. New buyers even get gold or silver for spot. That's sdbullion.com slash new. So I'm gonna start this off where I started this channel off. My use case started out simple. This is way back, whatever, 16 years ago. The idea that I had was just that I needed a simple emergency fund. And we all know how easy it is to hijack a traditional savings account for simple things. And I wanted something that actually sideline that cash. Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you've heard me talk about three ounces. I don't know what anybody else would need in their particular situation, but at the time, that was enough for me to feel like I had a basic emergency covered. Now, getting to that initial three ounces, that didn't require any real strategy. I just bought when I could, and I bought what I liked at the time. Now, if I was starting out today, I wouldn't change a whole lot. I'd buy the same way. I'd move some cash that I wasn't relying on into gold. And I, I know that that's easier said than done. Just step one, have some cash. But to me, buying gold is more like converting cash than it is like buying a thing. That money doesn't go away. I can convert it back at any time. Now, as for what I would buy, I would just keep it simple. I'd buy three American gold eagles. Now, these aren't the sexiest coins, but they're the easiest to move and the least likely for me to get too attached to them. So a buffalo might be the same thing in terms of liquidity and a gold maple leaf and probably a few other coins would be close. Between us, the more that I like a coin, the harder it is for me to sell it. So I would never have that initial three ounces being something like a series coin. So because this is my emergency fund, I would be more likely to pick up a popular gold bar and an assay than something like these high relief lunars here because most of my local shops have scanners now. So selling a bar to a dealer has gotten a lot easier. They'd be cheaper, I wouldn't be attached to them and I'd lose a lot less in a quick sale. So there's not really much strategy in the stacking for that first part that I could really share. I think the best way to come into precious metals is slowly and carefully. Just keep it simple. I wouldn't drain savings to buy the gold, the silver. I wouldn't sell off equities. I wouldn't run up credit card debt. I would just make it happen as cash freed up. Maybe get a bonus at work. Maybe you win a poker tournament or some other totally hypothetical scenario that definitely did not happen if the IRS is watching this. But I wouldn't ape in because the first three ounces wouldn't be something that I plan to profit on. Now, beyond that initial emergency fund, my strategy definitely begins to change. One of my wider use cases would be retirement savings or maybe call it estate savings. That might be a better label. Now, another would be to have opportunity capital, meaning if a property or land or the right investment appears out of left field, just comes out of nowhere, I might have some capital to put toward it. Now, for most of us, these kinds of use cases evolve over time. I wasn't going to be able to get involved in any kind of investment like that when I was, say, 25. So having a stack of gold available for that purpose at that time wouldn't have made much sense. Now, it would have been great, but most of my available income was going to ramen noodles. So for those two purposes, for the investment side, for the retirement side, I'm watching spot price. I'm paying attention to premiums 
because I want to limit my sunk cost. Now, when you start planning for scale, all of the little things you can overlook for those first few ounces become really important. And it's really easy to get well into your stack before you realize this. So if I had $100,000 to sink into metals, I would keep it really, really simple. I'd buy a tube of eagles, a tube of buffaloes, a tube of maple leaves, maybe some fractional eagles. Now you see the pattern here. I would be really consistent. Now that's 60 ounces of gold today. It's worth a lot more than 100K. And this Pelican box here can hold what? Like $160,000 the way that it's set up here if these were all full. But this would be a very straightforward sale because I don't have to pick through a bunch of variety. I don't have to work through a bunch of different prices. And I don't have to find a bunch of different buyers. There are local shops that would buy any and all of what I have here in this Pelican box all day long. Now, I might have to run to a few different shops to do it, but I could have it all sold inside of a day. Now, this is probably a good point to stop and point out that most of these tubes here are empty. You'd be disappointed if you showed up trying to rob me. Now, for this particular use case, I think it makes a lot of sense to use a vault. I keep some of what I have with vaulting service, and they would quickly liquidate for me as well. Now, I'm talking about switching to SD Bullion to handle this, but my current vault makes it really easy to liquidate Eagles, Buffaloes, Maples, and Krug. So that's what I keep there. One more reason for my preferences. So this is a minor thing, but since we're talking about the details of what to stack, I typically keep coins and individual capsules until I have 20 of them. Then I move them into these kinds of mint tubes. Now, if you're curious about these Pelican cases, they fit airtight tubes really well too. They just happen to fit a lot of different configurations for standard bullion coins. I could remove these American Silver Eagle tubes as well and drop in some slabs. It just all kind of works out. Now, I probably would not recommend keeping $160,000 in gold and silver in a Pelican box stashed in a Walmart safe in your master closet, but I think that this does a really good job representing just how simple I would keep things at scale. As soon as I start wandering, start buying a bunch of different variety, things that I like, the whole strategy changes. So nothing I'm saying here is meant as a universal rule. If there are actual mistakes in stacking, it would be probably not having a specific and consistent plan. That would be the one that stands out to me. I don't regret anything on the desk here, but I have plenty of other things that are gonna end up being a pain at some point. Now, other use cases beyond possible emergency needs, beyond building up life savings or having access to quick capital for opportunities, might be things like simple fun. I enjoy collecting, that's why I have those lunars there. Another might be disaster planning and also something that, if we're being completely honest, is something I would put in the entertainment category. That'd be SHTF prep. And the reason it's in the entertainment category is because a lot of that is just mental exercises, unlikely catastrophe planning. It's just not likely that it's going to be happening. So a lot of the pragmatic strategy that goes into the serious planning for the likely events is now out the window. So the fun stuff, the semi-numismatic gold, that's not going to be easy to liquidate. I'm not going to be running to the neighborhood coin shop to sell them. And then some of the single-use silver here, some of the small fractional gold, might never be used in a way that would ever justify their premium. So in either case, my earlier rules just don't apply. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I think you can make an argument that any gold or any silver just doesn't make sense if you get to pick a situation that they weren't intended to address. So you could say the premiums on silver eagles are too high. You could say gold backs are a terrible stacking option, and you'd be right in both cases unless you don't understand the context. Silver eagles are the most recognizable bullion coin in the world, and the exchange rate on gold backs, along with a private transaction angle, gives them a pretty useful purpose in that one circumstance. So either of them make a lot of sense in specific cases. Let me come back to that, though, with further details in a future video. The general point here is that the way that you stack depends a lot on your situation, a lot on your use case. Now, I'm getting a lot of questions lately from people who are new to gold, new to silver, asking for tips, how to buy, where to buy, all of it. Now, I assume it's based on the extra press due to these all-time highs, so I just wanted to make the point here that the way you approach gold and silver changes dramatically depending on intent. 
So hopefully that gives you some ideas based on those different cases. Keep it simple for an emergency fund. Keep it organized for broader savings. Interesting for fun. And then, yeah, sure, keep it weird for SHTF. Just work out your reasons for getting into it rather than trying to build the plane in the air. I think you'll thank yourself down the line. So let's call it good there. If you've been at this for a while, let us know in the comments what works best for you. If you're like me, you ended up kicking yourself or buying some kind of sideshow gold when you knew better, love to hear that too. And then some of you, you're going to say there's no such thing as wrong gold. And maybe that's true in your case. Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.